there, all you mighty fine window shoppers. Hey, 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 sweetie. Do I have something special for you on this episode of... Red Movie Rama! Hey, guys. I just want to introduce y'all to somebody. This is my guest on this episode. It's Dan Bone. Uh, hello! Hey, hey. Hey. Oh, that's Rick. hey everyone! Hey, hey, wow. hey, hey, hold, hold, hold on. Dan, is that Dan, is, Rick, you never said you were friends with the Dan Bone from, from Podcast on Haunted Hill, right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's who he is. I mean, there he is. Say hi to him. Hey, hey, Dan! Hey, how you doing? Wow, nice to meet you. Well, nice to meet all of you, actually. God, I've it's great. I've heard heard you all talking. I've heard so much about you all, and here you all are. But, wow. Well, my mom, my mom is going to freak out when she knows that I got to meet Dan Bo- At the Naval Base, you guys are listened to all the time. I think I, I, think I might have met your mom at the Naval Base, actually. I think I might. What, maybe what, be- hold, hold on. What are you trying to say, Dan? Oh, m- nothing. Uh, hello, who are you? Hello. <laughs> Look at this guy. Fancy podcasting guy. Not in my room. No way. I'm here. I'm here. Well, sorry. I'm here, guys. This is it. I've been invited. Rick, Ricky's invited me. He's the he's the master. He's the master of ceremony. Yeah, I mean, you guys you guys just need to chill out. I mean, we're, we're here to do a show. I mean, you're lucky because normally I make you go hide. When I bring guests on, but I figured, you know, I know Aswell's a fan. Yes, yes, I am. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited about oh, what movie are we doing. Well, actually, Aswell, I think you're still not going to be while we're doing the movie. But I just wanted you to, to, you know, get to meet Dan. Well, yeah, I mean, Ricky, I'm, I'm sensing a little hostility from from the guys, actually, um, from some of them anyway. Um, this Aswell guy's cool. He can stay. Can he? Can he stay with us? Can, can I stay, Skippy? Yeah, I don't know, man. We'll 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 see how it works out. I tell you what, we'll let you start, and if you if you do well, then then yeah, you can stick around. Oh, great! So so, what movie are we doing? Well, well, we're we're d- doing a movie called uh, Mannequin. Okay, that sounds really stupid. I figured Dan would pick a you know a better sounding movie than that. <laughs> well, man, what's what's stupid about Mannequin? Well, I, I well, don't know. I mean, it, just, it sounds stupid. It's, you should have just called the movie Dummy. Well, it's it's funny you say that because that's kind of what it's about. It's about a guy that falls in love with a mannequin. It, well, hold on, wait. So, so, so you're you're telling me that you invited Dan from Podcast on Honor Hill to come on the show and talk about a movie about a guy's getting it on with a, with a mannequin. Yeah, I mean but that's pretty yeah, much it, Dan. Right? Yeah, that's what you did. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's. I mean, I suggested it. I, I think this is you, the one well, I wanted on. to talk about. Dan, you, yeah. the man of your stature, you picked uh, this movie. Yeah, I did. Sorry, I. I'm sorry. But am I? Is it wrong? Was I, was I wrong? I'm fabric-glasted. I can't even say it. I can't even say fabric-glasted because I'm so messed <laughs> up. I would figure you would at least pick like Gone with the Wind or some great classic, but th- th- some stupid dummy movie. Yeah, it's as, a classic. As, as well, you got to calm down, man. This this is this is the eighties at its most cocaineish. <laughs> 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 well, so so uh, okay, um, we might as well get down to it. Uh, so what what's this movie about? It's about a guy that works in a department store who is lonely. And falls in love with a, a dummy. That, yeah, that's, that's kind of it. Not helping. Not helping at all. Um, he kind of gets it on with her a bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we're going to have to have a, a little better explanation. So, uh, take it away, Rick. Mannequin is a 1987 comedy fantasy romance movie. Directed by Michael Gottlieb. A young artist... Searching for his vocation makes a mannequin so perfect that he falls in love with it. Finding the mannequin in a store window, he gets a job there and his creation comes to life. Starring Andrew McCarthy as Jonathan Switcher. Yeah, he's looking for some wood. Kim Control as Smoking Hot Emmy. 
That's all I'm going to say about that. Estelle Getty as Claire Temkin. Hey, she runs the store. James Spader as Richards. Hey, what a slime ball. G.W. Bailey as Felix. Yeah, he's the mall cop. And Messick Taylor as Hollywood, the real star of this movie. And a whole bunch of other people that uh, just run in scenes back and forth. Back to you, Rick. We had initially picked a different movie to do on here, but somehow we fell in this one. Dan recommended it. I, I, before we jump into it, I want to know, when was the first time you saw this? Is this a childhood favorite, or is it just something you picked up later on in life? It's it's a childhood favorite, and Kim Cattrall is a big reason for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's hot! <laughs> Now that is hot. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I kind of discovered this movie, probably was about 10 or 11. And let's just say it made me feel funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I don't know. It just, and, and also it's quite, it's quite sweet at heart, really, the film. Yeah. It's quite funny. And also it's got that kind of thing in it, which we've all got as from kid, being a kid, which is that fantasy of running around, a department store or a shopping center doing whatever the hell you want, whether it's a George Romero movie or whether it's with Kim Cattrall dressed up as a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I find fascinating about this, because I, I really think through all the conversations you and I have had, even though we really haven't done much podcasting together, is I, I don't see much that we really disagree on. It's almost like we're right on the same page as far as likes of stuff. And... Yeah, this is one of those movies, man. I have to admit, uh, I watched it again last night. I, I asked my wife, we were bored, and said, hey, you, you want to watch Mannequin? She was like, yeah, okay. And then she said, wait a minute. Is that the one that's got Kim Cattrall in it? And I was like, yeah. She said, I don't know, I don't know if I need to watch that with you, because <laughs> you may start <laughs> acting strange. <laughs> So yeah, she she knows as well that uh you know Kim Cattrall was was an item for myself growing up. So uh yeah, man. And this is uh I've said it in passing, this is her at her finest, man. She's smoking in this movie. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, it's a chance for the producers and the director to put her in an array of incredible costumes because she's she's a mannequin, you know, right. dress her up. <laughs> so one other thing we got to talk about, because we also talked about a movie company that we both have an affection for, which is Canon Films. But even though this movie is is a Fox production, internationally it was carried by dum 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 Canon Films. <laughs> <laughs> And I opted yeah. out. Here's here's my story with this movie. I remember when this came out, and I remember seeing the video by Jefferson or Starship at the time. They weren't Jefferson Starship, just Starship, which they had the huge hit. It was on MTV nonstop, which probably made me go, yeah, I don't want to see this. I never put it together in my head that that was Kim Cattrall in the video. So this came out yeah. the same time that uh, Outrageous Fortune came out with Shelley Long okay. and, and Bette Miller. So me and my wife, actually, with my girlfriend at the time, Went and seen that one instead. So I never caught this in the theater. So I, I saw it later on in VHS. And I never put it together that that was her in this movie for some reason. But uh, that changed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, yeah. yeah, man. All right. Let's 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 get back into it. We're, we're in Egypt. And we meet Emmy, which is Kim Cattrall. And Who clearly looks Egyptian. Clearly, yeah, absolutely. The the the, the light hair and wait, well, we can't really tell at first because she's dressed up like a mummy because she's hiding from her mom. <laughs> she's uh, had one of these uh, set up weddings. This is about the fourth or fifth one that she's dodged out of, and her mom's trying to get her to marry a camel dung salesman. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, Ricky, let's let's give him his proper title. He's a fuel dealer. He deals in fuel. <laughs> Oh, so it's get this funny setup where she's the rebellious. I don't want to do what other girls do and get married and settle down. I want to see the world, do great things. And in the middle of all this, she yells out to the gods to please get me out of this situation. And she's gone. Oh, Just, yeah. We get an act of God shakes the, the, the pyramid that she's within. Yeah. Flashes of lightning. Boom. She's dis She's gone. Yeah, and then we cut to an animated opening credits series, which uh, has a 
a uh, Belinda Carlisle song going on. It does. It yeah. does have Belinda Carlisle. And this is now, you know you, you know you're hitting the eighties when when you get an animated <laughs> cartoon style intro with Belinda Carlisle singing over the top. Yeah. You know you know you you're getting into the eighties here. Eighty seven, boom, here we go. Let's do it. <laughs> Which is kinda sad too, because this is right at the breakup point of the go go's, right? So Oh don't. Yeah. I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, the wildest dreams. <laughs> <laughs> That's hot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, so we cut to Philadelphia, which is the uh, the city of brotherly love and Rocky Balboa. <laughs> oh yeah. And I have to admit, well, watching this movie, I always forget that it's Philadelphia because it feels like L.A. It feels like New York. You know, with the yeah. shopping centers and all this stuff. And it's weird. You keep going, wait a minute. This is Philadelphia. It, it's it's weird that it's set there. It's such an odd choice, I think. Not that I, always figured it was, I mean, I figured it was New York when I was a kid. Because right. to me, anywhere American was New York when I was a kid. Sure. You know, I was like, oh, well, they, they must live in New York. Yeah, great. But no, they don't. <laughs> I, realize, I realize as I'm older that America is a very large place for kids. You would probably you know, agree with, and there are lots of many places, not just New York. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, where I live is nothing like New York. My neighbors are Amish, <laughs> if that tells you anything, so. There we go, look. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, well, we're in Philadelphia, we meet Jonathan, and he's working in a shop that makes mannequins, I believe is what they're doing, which it looks like, uh, it looks like he's loving his job, because apparently dancing is encouraged while you work, because not only is he dancing, but the other people that are working there are dancing as well. It's a great scene. <laughs> bit of my girl, you know? Boom, 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 yeah. boom. And my favorite bit is the guy, the guy, the other guy, not him, yeah. but not Jonathan Switcher, because he's he's happy. He's putting his mannequin together. And then you cut to that guy behind him <laughs> who's just leaning back. And he's really <laughs> leaning into the song. You think, I want to work at this mannequin factory. Right. <laughs> and it's also a case of where they don't really play the song, so you're just singing it. You know, yeah. on a yeah. whim, and then they try to put the song behind it, and it doesn't match up at all. So it's, uh, no. <laughs> but hey, what can <laughs> you do, right? They probably had a fight to get the the rights to be able to use the song eventually. So who knows? I was surprised actually that they got that in in this. To be honest with you, um, yeah. but hey, you know, yeah, it's classic, classic song. So, but he's yeah, putting a mannequin good. together that looks very familiar, and uh, you know he's. You know, trying to put arms on it, and he, oh, Popeye look. You know, he's putting the wrong arms on the mannequin and all stuff, so it's a lot of Wrong fun. gender as well, at one point. <laughs> oh, wrong gender. <laughs> and uh, he's he's kind of put her together, and he's admiring her a bit, and then his boss comes in and is like, hey, when are you going to get this done? He's like, hey, I think I can knock out one of these every couple of days. So He's like, you're supposed to do like three or four of these a shift. <laughs> So poor Jonathan, he's he's an artiste, and he applies that to everything that he does, but it always gets him fired. So he goes from this job to blowing up animal balloons, or balloon animals, at a birthday party for a kid. He screws he gets that called, up. Uh, he gets called bis- Biscuit Brain, doesn't biscuit he? Brain. <laughs> biscuit Brain. Biscuit Brain. My old man's paying you. I want the big balloon. <laughs> yeah, he gives the kid the big balloon, and the kid floats off. I mean, it's it's but, typical eighties humor, right? <laughs> yeah, but that's funny because his dad's like, "Hey, hey, butt breath or something. Get your hand off my kid." And he's like, "Okay, he lets go, and the kid floats off." But then you hear the kid go, "Wow!" And so he's like, <laughs> "It's not bad. The kid's having fun up there." <laughs> uh, then you get the trimming the hedges scene where he's. He's trimming a big rabbit, you know. <laughs> get your check. Get out of here. Uh, you a little Edward Scissorhands going on there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he does. And then he goes to a pizza place as well, and he's trying his best to make a great looking. I mean, his pizza looks great, but yeah. it's taking him hours to make it again. Everything's symmetrical, you know. He's got everything, all the toppings laid out a certain pattern. You know, it looks great. And he gets fired from there too. And uh, later on, he goes to pick up Roxy, his girlfriend. Who works at uh, Illustra? Illustra, which is a big shopping mall type business, a you know, a huge store, uh, yeah. almost like a Macy's or something like that, but very cutting edge for the eighties. 
Yeah, it, it also reminds me of the name of the an, a name of one of the organisations in Gem and the Holograms. I'm sure. Oh, there was something in that called Illustra. Like, didn't weren't the baddies? In, I don't know. Maybe I'm Probably wrong. So. I don't know. I've got a friend that would be able to tell us all of that. He's a big yeah. gym fanatic, so... Well, I mean, gem's amazing. It's yeah. truly, truly, truly outrageous. Truly outrageous. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was um, good. And also, <laughs> let's not skip over um, Jonathan's sweet motorcycle. Oh, yeah. Uh, the he rides around Philly on. Yep. And, you know, I, I don't know what your impressions are over there of Harley Davidson. Uh, obviously, it's one of those America things, right? But... Mm. During the 80s, they were not the best motorcycles. <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, and obviously, we kind of get a, a a part of that as, as, if, as if we go here. But he's picking up Roxy on his motorcycle. She's like, she she's a little embarrassed, right? Because everybody else she's working with are top notch, well off. The 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 manager, uh, the owner, I guess, of Illustra is getting into his limo right behind her, and he says, oh, yeah. "Hey, see you later, Roxy." And she's like, "Oh, hey, bye." Very so embarrassed. Can you get this get this bucket of bolts started immediately, please. <laughs> right. <laughs> Cranks it up. They go off, and she pretty much uh, says, "You know what? I, I think we're kind of done for a while." Uh, you know, you're you're not getting anywhere. You keep losing your jobs. This just isn't going anywhere. So she jumps in a cab and takes off, and it starts to rain. Well, and, that's the triple hit, Rick. That's the oh, triple yeah. hit. The yeah. 80s, you lose your job, you lose your woman, and the heavens will open on you all within, you know, that opening couple of scenes. Yeah. Establishing where you're at as a human being. In pure... <laughs> Pure eighty style, man. I mean, this is it's it's your worst. As my granddaughter would say, worst day ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. My granddaughter sounds a lot like Aswell. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, man, he he tries to get his motorcycle cranked because it's starting to rain and it won't crank. So here he is pushing his motorcycle down the street, and then he sees her. He sees She's her in, in a window. window. And he walks up and he's like, my creation! And he's like talking to her. He's like, you're the only thing I've ever created that was worth a crap. And, you know, he goes on and on about how he just admires her so much. And he says, see you tomorrow. <laughs> Can we talk about the fact of, I don't know if we've seen them yet, but what's with the bowling shoes? Yeah, um, that's something that I read read up on like reading up for this to this conversation but also yeah. afterwards like after watching the film i noticed every scene he's wearing bowling shoes i don't <laughs> know why that is it's quite prominent at the end because in the poster like the famous poster that used to be in the yep. the video store everywhere to, every time i went in there there's that poster of him leaning on the bike mm -hmm. with kim Kachar behind him and he's got those converse on you know the high top converse which i've got you know yeah. i think everybody wanted converse everyone, everyone wore them but he doesn't wear them in this film. He wears bloody bowling shoes all the yeah. time. I just Why? Wonder, I wonder if they were trying to start a, a new trend or what the deal was. But, yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> no, it didn't work. I don't want to wear somebody else's shoes that have been sprayed with a disinfectant. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, But uh, the next day, he uh, decides to go back to where he saw the mannequin in the window. How much is that mannequin in the window? <laughs> and uh, we meet Claire, who is the owner of a, another store that she happens to have the mannequin in the window display. And Claire, if you don't know, is played by... Who is it, Dan? Est Estelle Getty. Yeah. Thank you for being a friend. <laughs> I mean... Travel you, down the road and back again. <laughs> if, you just, if you just put a wig on her head, I mean, she talks exactly the same, acts exactly the same. As she does on Golden Girls. She is a sweetheart, isn't yeah, she? Yeah. Especially in this film, she's, she is the kind of person you want to bump into and get you a job and get Absolutely. you in the door. She's beautiful in this. Love this her. is the kind of person you want to work for, for life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sure. For uh, sure. But yeah. Uh, the, and also, the most 80s 
um, sort of Laurel and Hardy moment of all time oh, as yeah. well with him with the hundred hundred year sign. It's just absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. Some of it's sort of cranked up as well. They cranked up the speed of oh, the, yeah. the camera. So the, the, I'll just describe it if you don't mind, Rick. So he's sort of chatting to her and then they're putting up the 100 years <laughs> anniversary sign. And he says to her, 100 years, that's great. She's like, well, I'm. I, it's not me that's 100 years. It's a story. <laughs> they have a bit of a joke about that. But then the sign comes slamming down because somebody walks into somebody he grabs it i got it i don't got it he does that whole kind of thing and then he's on the sign swinging backwards and forwards sometimes at a highly cranked rate sometimes under cranked and then she says what can i do to make up for you what does she do rick she gives him a job gives him a job but i kept telling my wife i was like why don't he have this conversation after he gets off the sign i mean what, what off, i would just jump off i could have ju- i could i'm not the, i'm not jackie jan but i could have jumped off of that sign easily but yeah he, sa- he saved her life by pushing her out of the way and i'm going why didn't they just put it on like a you know just like a banner type material why, why did you make this big heavy three thousand pound sign to hang on the side of a building when you know you're going to take it back down because it says 100 years. <laughs> That's actually really true because most places put up a vinyl sort of banner, don't they? Right. They don't. They wouldn't spend all that money on a really heavy. That probably would have cost quite a few thousand dollars to get that up there. Oh yeah, no doubt. And according to the business that they have inside, that's probably not a good investment. <laughs> oh no. Uh, so, Great, yeah. Good reveal that as well. That in a moment when when he says, "What time do we open?" Yeah, yeah. She talks him. She walks him into the store. They're looking around. Huge store, and like we said, there's just no business. And he's like, "Wow, this place is really neat." When do we open? She's like, "We are open." <laughs> and uh, yeah, so this is a huge, huge business that had its heyday back in the 40s and 50s, but they're just not hip, man. And this store is gargantuan. Mm, yeah, it's, it's like the, um. It's There's the size stores of a in, mall, in London. just the one store. I mean, what's the stores in London that are like this? That are just, you know, I can't afford even a pair of socks in some of the stores in London that are like this. You know, and you walk in and you think, who oh, shops in here? It's right. ridiculous. Yeah. so Absolutely it, massive. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I've, I've never been in a store that was this size. I mean, we had, you know, your JC Penney's and stuff like that that's in your shopping malls, which would have the two-floor type level, you know, stores, but not to this size. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's pretty massive. Yeah. You know, you, you you get it's good. It's a really good set to play with for the director. Like later oh, yeah. on, when you see when you get like Roxy and, and Armand later on, and you get that whole like celebrity squares thing where you've got all the different <laughs> boxes. It, it's just a great set. But, yeah. Um, it's just it's mad. No wonder they're going out of business. It's you could li- you could put about a hundred families in there living in there. <laughs> Oh, so coming out of this, Claire leads Jonathan up to meet Richards, which is, uh, you know, James Spader, man. I mean, if anybody was oh. was made to play the heel or the bad guy in any movie, it's James Spader. He is, uh, the way that my dad describes him in this is slimy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's he actually slimy. He is slimy. Yeah. <laughs> he's actually working with Illustra to try to shut down this business and take over the business because they're competitors. And he's, you know, in charge of a lot in this in this store for Claire, but he's trying to help this transition along because mm. I guess grass is greener on the other side, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. That's what yeah. it is. And he's um he's he's clever enough to sort of know that the grass is greener and that he can you know be as devious as he can. But also it, it gets to a point where he's becomes that bungling eighties <laughs> guy that just can't quite ma- finish the job, finish right. the plan. Yeah. And that's he won- because he's hindered by <laughs> Felix, of course. <laughs> Felix, man. <laughs> so, yeah, coming out of this, they offer Jonathan a job, and he's wanting to do something creative. He's walking in. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm good with this. I'm good with this. I've got just a job for you. Stock boy. <laughs> yeah. Ladies' is, underwear in a big cart. Yeah. Walking it around. <laughs> Which is where you start, right? I mean, in any business, you're you're not going to be the, the head window dresser. You've got to work your way That's up, true. right? That's true. Uh, then he makes a phone call during the middle of a shift to Roxy saying, hey, I got this new job. And this phone call is not really that important. What is important is after she hangs up the phone, <laughs> Amar 
her work partner. <laughs> oh gosh, he is he is the sleaziest man. I mean, he he is pr- pretty much a rapist like uh, without without being that. You know, the, the, he won't let up. Will he won't stop. He won't stop touching and p- p- prodding and poking and making comments. It's just <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> I'll take the rapist for 200. That's therapist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, he's, he's, I mean, he's even like, uh, he cannot be satisfying you sexually, and he'll thrust his hips at her. I mean, yeah, like, and she's like, she's totally like, this actress, can we talk about um, yeah. Roxy for a minute, Carol Davis? She's actually phenomenal comedy actor um she yeah. the way she there's a couple of times where you almost see her laughing like later on when she knocks it Armand down the escalator uh, but but there's a few like she hit when she hits him she hits him for real do you notice she's like really yeah. slapping him in the face because she's yeah. not looking he's behind her and she's like slap slap <laughs> she, and he's obviously like playing around saying his mo- the most extreme things he can <laughs> but she's just such a strong-willed character that she's just like no <laughs> and after he knows he crosses the line, then he starts doing the "Oh, forgive me, I'm a I'm a foreigner, and my my tongue slips." You know, he starts playing English, that card. She's not my language. I like it later when he sees her, and he's like, "Ah, oh, you you're coming to work? Can I ride you?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he just that's his little thing. He pretends English isn't my uh, strongest language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> And coming out of that, you got Jonathan sneaking around, even though he's he's trying to partially do his job, but he's looking for his mannequin. And when he finds her, he meets Hollywood. Oh my God! Well, this character is phenomenal. Yes. Um, and also, on a serious note, this character is really, really forward thinking for a nine eighty seven movie about a man who falls in love with a mannequin. Because you've got a black gay guy yeah. but openly gay with a boyfriend he talks about him and it's just like a really refreshing but he doesn't play to okay there are stereotypes he plays to but also he like is completely a strong character yeah. his own character he's awesome and he's one of the most memorable parts of the film by the end yes. the, the end credits role yeah he's i mean amazing. It, and that's that's something i always talk about is is i don't know just as a society have we just gotten weaker because these characters have been out there for so long. I mean, mm, yeah. I remember, you know, growing up watching, you know, Paul End and all these people openly gay, but it, it didn't matter, right? And now we almost act like it's such a staple of who we are. Hey, well, I mean, I'm glad that it's a part of it, but just like this character right here, I don't know anybody that doesn't like Hollywood. I mean, oh my God, he's amazing. It, it doesn't matter that, that he's gay because it's just, it's just who he is. And, yeah. Like you said, I mean, well, they even made a part two to this, and it's mainly because they wanted more Hollywood. I mean, <laughs> I, well, I who doesn't want more Hollywood? Hollywood right. entrees. It just what does he say? It just rolls up the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> he's so good, and he's yeah. always talking about this 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 boyfriend Albert that Albert. We, we never meet. <laughs> Albert says my hips are big, and Albert says this, and it's just, it doesn't matter because he's just Hollywood, and his sunglasses, and his outfits, and his little mannerisms, and the way he does some these clicks the snaps man yeah i always oh, think of snaps. uh Badass. um uh in living color right they had the the men on film oh yeah hated it they do the snaps i'm like man they that's he, hollywood they took it from well, hollywood there's one snap he does where he reminds me of aunt viv in uh the fresh prince for that, that that scene where she does the dance in the dance school <laughs> and then at the end she goes up to the young girls and she like does this ferocious <laughs> click in their face. And I'm like, that is, she's got the Hollywood click going on there. <laughs> that click mm. is just the end. Like, that means it's over for you. Yeah. Boom. In Hollywood, he's, he's he's fantastic. And he's he is the store's window decorator. Ed. That's his job. And Jonathan, is. Jonathan wants to help, right, and, and be involved because he's found his mannequin. And this is where you get, like you said, the Albert speech of, you know, uh, he's upset because Albert says his thighs are big and all this kind of stuff. And he, says, he says, I've tried diets and diets don't work. Because it's the jelly donuts. It's the jelly donuts. They call to me in the middle of the night. Hollywood. 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 Come and get me, Hollywood. <laughs> it's fantastic. 
And uh, so, good. so he ends up, Jonathan says, hey, you know what? This display looks great. Go ahead. Go see Albert. I'll take care of things here. So Hollywood leaves. And then we get where Jonathan uh, is trying to set up more of the display. And he looks at the mannequin and says something. And then all of a sudden, she comes alive. Yeah, he says something, and she says, "Why would you say that?" Right. And there she is. There she is. King and, Cattrall. Yeah. And from here on, we're we're getting just a lot of scenes of I don't believe what I'm what's happening here. And she's like, "Well, you created me, and yeah, I liked your hands. They felt good when you were putting me together." And he's just like, "What? Oh boy, <laughs> that's hot." She's like, <laughs> "Oh no, that's hot." That's hot. She says, "She says uh, you must be good with your hands. You really know how to put something together." And he's just sort of <laughs> every every ten year old boy. I mean, I was ten or eleven when I watched this. My collar was. I didn't. And I didn't know why my collar had steam coming out of it because I was too young to know why. But I was sort of like, "Oh, what does it mean?" <laughs> yeah, I always think of like uh, the mask, right? The Jim Carrey, you know, and he sees <laughs> Cameron Diaz and the smoke Ooh. and the oh. You know the whole thing, right? <laughs> bang, 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 bang on the head. <laughs> uh, but we get some scenes where they're working on this this uh, window dressing that they're doing, and they're in a carpentry shop, and they're turning on saws, and she's going around messing with things, picks up a nail gun, shoots a few nails at him. <laughs> she does a she does a um, a Roger Murta fires a few nails at him. Yeah. And uh, um, he in this scene here, actually, he really reminds me of and I came full circle on this and bear with me here. He really reminds me of and I don't know if you're a big fan of the new Spider-Man, Tom Holland. Yeah, but he really reminds me of Tom Holland in these scenes. Hmm. And like, Tom Holland always reminds me of sort of Michael J. Fox. Sure. When he first came out. So now I'm going back and I'm looking at this thinking Andrew McCarthy. Yeah. Michael J. Fox. I could kind of see Michael mm-hmm. J. Fox in this role. He's got that kind of young that energy, that nervous sort of... Because <laughs> he speaks... There's a few scenes where he speaks a bit like Bobcat Goldthwaite almost as well, where he's so nervous. He's like, oh, oh my God, I must be out of my mind here. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I don't know, man. It's just that young energy he brings. He's definitely, you know, I'm surprised this guy, you know, he's done a few movies, obviously we know, but he should have done more, I think, really. Right, yeah. Uh, you know what we forgot to bring up before this? The security officer. G.W. Bailey. G.W. Bailey, which is Felix Maxwell and his dog Rambo. I call him Rambo. Because he, <laughs> he likes, likes to draw first, first blood. blood. <laughs> Get it? I love that. <laughs> oh. Rambo looks like the softest dog in the world as well. He looks like he wouldn't do anything to anybody. He's such a lovely look- looking dog. Especially later on when he's in the um the tow truck thing right. that he's dragging him in. <laughs> he's not gonna do anything, is he? Well even you might want to get your dog out of the tree. <laughs> it's fantastic. But of course he's one of these watching every move you make. I mean, come on, he's a, he's the same character he is in Police Academy. I mean, you know, oh. it's the, the, the bumbling cop, right? And he's he's great in this. Um, but Jonathan runs into him early on. I'm, I'm here to help Hollywood. Oh, you're one of those, huh? So where do you people Why? come from? Yeah. <laughs> Ohio! O- Ohio! <laughs> they have them there? <laughs> and he said, well, it could be worse. <laughs> I could be working with a bigoted jerk, and I right. thought that's good. It's good that they brought brought it back around like that. Because <laughs> some movies back then would have just left the sure. sort of bigotry, right? But, but actually, he kind of it kind of nails in with that one. Really, it's quite good. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. During the frolicking of around in the mall, uh, we get where Emmy just says, "Hey, I'm going to take my clothes off right here in front of you, Jonathan." Bye. My my now my wife was watching the majority of this film with me. She watched like the first hour of it with me, and uh, she'd never seen it before. And yeah. she said, "So Kim Cattrall?" And I said, "Yeah." She said, "You like her, don't you?" And I said, mm, "She's all right." Yeah. <laughs> and we got to the scene that scene where she sort of just says Jonathan and yeah. just opens up her coat, and I just saw her glance over the cushion at me like shake your head and i was like whoa no, i didn't say a thing it's the movie it's the movie <laughs> it's not me it's her 
<laughs> but yeah, again, as a, as a 12 year old boy, 11 year old boy, you would have seen that and thought, well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's hot. That's hot. That's hot. But uh, next morning, Jonathan wakes up and he's asleep in the display window. And he hasn't really looked at what's happened. It's just like he doesn't believe it. He looks up and sees the mannequin there, and he's like, okay, all oh, that must have just been a dream. I don't know. Things are really weird. But uh, I don't know. He's pretty convinced that it really happened, though, because he goes to find Roxy, and uh, she's upset because they were supposed to meet last night. And uh, he's trying to tell Roxy about, I, I, I was working at the store, and this mannequin came alive, and it's the girl, and he's just blabbering on like an idiot. Roxy don't want to hear it, so she's she gets in the car with Amar instead of getting on the bike with Jonathan. Yeah, she's about to get on the bike, but because and Amar's going, there's only one thing that could help you at this time, which is to come home and have completely unbridled, passionate <laughs> sex with me. And she's like, that's I'm not going to do that. And then Ma, then Jonathan pulls up. She's like, take me back to your apartment right now. Yeah, before I change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, my God, I am like the wind. <laughs> <laughs> but according to the, the way this thing works out, you get some scenes here where Richard is talking to B.J. Wirt, who, who's, who's the owner of of uh, Alestra. Alestra. And uh, so this is where that connection is of where they're trying to tear down the other business and take it over. But business starts booming, man, because... Everybody's coming by and checking out these these windows, and uh, you know people start coming right. in and buying stuff. And this is such an eighties thing, both probably in real life, but also in an eight, in eighties as well. Because people like in movies in the eighties, people. I'm thinking about something like Team Wolf. He becomes amazing as a werewolf basketballer, and yeah. therefore becomes really famous and really <laughs> successful. This guy becomes really famous and successful and so does the the department store because of his window dressings it's just that weird yeah. 80s thing and yeah. it probably happened in real life and sometimes as well you know i can imagine a store having sure. i can actually imagine especially like somewhere in new york i can imagine there was a store that every week they had a new window and people would flock to see it take pictures like they do here you know there's a woman sketching it every time they they show her she's sketching the new you know it, it's kind of believable but not it's like it's, it's that nice thin line between the two right i love it yeah and that, that's you know i, I always and i was going to say this towards the end of the show but you know i always talk about the ultimate essential 80s movie right and mm-hmm. normally that path leads to uh ferris bueller i always use yep. that as a launching point you know if i if somebody asked me what is an 80s movie Ferris Bueller, and then on the other end of that spectrum is usually RoboCop. I think those two movies really represent what the 80s were. But you know what? This movie right here may be the most 80s movie ever made. It's right bang in the middle of those two. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's success, it's commercialism, it's it's money, it's not having money. It's, it's the, just... The freaking clothes, man. I mean, not just about oh, the, the, the people in the stores, stores that are shopping. I'm just like, look at that woman's jacket. <laughs> I mean, it's insane. And again, because you've got Kim Cattrall, essentially, she is literally playing a mannequin. They can dress her up in all of these clothes. Like, she's wearing yeah. some horrific cycling light crowd face at one point. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie to you, Ricky. Uh, she looks fantastic in them. It's hot! <laughs> she's hot! <laughs> but also she wears some terrible like and also Amand at one point Amand is wearing this like leather yeah. jacket that's like feathered cut off leather jacket thing which I don't think I've ever seen anybody wear anything like that. You you can't <laughs> even really describe it. It's like a poncho <laughs> but it's, it's like a leather jacket that's been massacred to turn into a bit of a poncho but it's not right. quite made it. <laughs> it's almost like you could pull a cord and it would expand into a like a ball or something. I mean, it's, but it, but it folds back down to these little flaps. <laughs> if he was like um, a special agent in a, in an eighty show or something, he'd jump off a cliff, press a button, and they turn into like hang glider wings, right? And then fold back in. It's that's what that's the best way to describe it: a folded in hang glider. I'm glad you're getting to the hang glider because we're definitely getting to oh, that, right? <laughs> there is a hang glider. And that's, again, how much more 80s could a movie be when you have someone hang gliding in a department in, in a store? store? 
Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> she, she always wanted to fly, right? Uh, hey, let's talk about this. I mean, of course, the business is booming. They give uh, Jonathan a, a, a better job. They, he keeps moving up the, the ladder really quick. And uh, then the next night when he's sending up the second window, let's talk about this dance montage, man. Um, this is the best bit of the film. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> it's incredible. They, they're dancing around. Well, I mean, she's... They go to kiss. She seems shy, which is odd, because she just flashed him her goods the night before. Right. Moving forward. She <laughs> falls onto some switches. All the music comes on, and she says, this this cheesiest line ever, she looks at the speakers, and she says, oh, where do they hide all the musicians? <laughs> <laughs> and then we get this amazing montage where they're just dancing around. They're dressed up as Al Cap- Pone. They're dressed up as uh, Phantom of the the Opera. Yeah. Um, You know, they're just, they're they're basically role, let's be honest, they're role playing. There's a bit of a, there is like a a, a sexual undertone there. You know, you wouldn't see it maybe as a kid, but as an adult, you kind of see they're totally role playing. They're doing that, doing all these different role plays. Yeah. And it ends with them like sort of getting it on, you know, and it's just like a really fun five minute scene where there's a great, music playing they're dressed in you know, they both get to dress up in these different outfits they're clearly having a lot of fun you get that whole bit of the lift where he's got the guitar yeah he does the, the, the skip out the the, the, sort of the dance the chuck berry the yeah the chuck berry as he follows her out the lift it's so good i mean there's yeah such a fun moment really yeah, isn't man. it she's got that those fish nets on and the in the the spiky hair wig yeah she flashes it doesn't she under the <laughs> yeah, she does. she's got the the fur the coat, coat. He blows smoke in her face, and she sort of yeah. says, oh, whatever, and then she flashes him, yeah, and he just chases after her. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember anything past that point of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think my wife threw a cushion at my head during that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And, it, and it's such an innocent thing, too, man. I mean, I mean, deep down, you're, you're feeling something. You're like, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, but it's not like, you know deep-seated stuff it's just oh, it's it's it's, just, it's the movie is sweet at heart it is sweet at heart the film yeah. honestly it is <laughs> oh. it's good though good times oh man uh so let's talk about uh roxy calls jonathan back up hey come meet me for for lunch and they're wanting to offer him a job to come work and yeah. do the windows at uh, Lustrug because their business is really falling off. I mean, it's like drastic. Within a week, you know, it's like 48% of his business has dropped in a week. It's like in the headlines <laughs> as well. He's like, Lustra loses, uh, you know, 48% of profits. And then it's like, um, the woman from the Golden Girls profits is up by yeah. whatever percent. It's like, hang on a minute. What's going on? Just because of some mannequins in the window. What? Uh, that's all you got to do, man. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes to meet Roxy, and this is a place that he worked at before, which they, you know, they make this running <laughs> joke about him almost burning the place to the ground last time he was working exactly. there. The balcony, they rebuilt the balcony really well because that went up like a Roman candle last time I was there. <laughs> <laughs> the souffle terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's like, oh my. When he walks in, the head waiter's like, oh my God. It's you. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> yeah, I see you're wearing your night hair during the day now. That's good. <laughs> your eyebrows are growing back really good, too. <laughs> <laughs> comes in handy as well because <laughs> he he leaves quick smart after turning um roxy down bumps into somebody who's carrying like a flaming whatever it is yeah everything catches fire he takes his wig <laughs> off <laughs> tries to put it out the wig. i mean it's so ridiculous but and you know it's coming all right uh, you know you you know what's gonna happen and but you you just you're along for the ride man it, it for some reason it's totally passable <laughs> 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 oh. uh, so next night, setting up the new display. This is where Roxy and Amon sneak into the store. Oh yeah, to see how Jonathan's doing this and who he's working with. And but also, um, Felix is also <laughs> yes. being asked. To, oh yeah, he's keep been asked eye. to go on a mission. Yeah. with Rambo to keep it because they, you know, they they suspect something strange is happening, and he's like, <laughs> of course, he takes it. Yeah. Yeah. This is a mission. He sort of salutes. This is my mission. <laughs> and this is where he becomes a bit more. Um, is it Harris he played in? Uh, not Harris. Who did he play in? Um, uh, Police Academy. Crap. Uh, 
Why well, can't I remember his name? You know who I mean. Yeah. The guy the guy from Police Academy. Move it, move it. <laughs> yeah. You got Proctor and Ah <sighs> That guy. Crap. It is Harris. I think yeah, I think it's right. I'm pretty sure it's Harris. <laughs> Proctor. Let's go with Harris. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, he he comes up and you know we get the scene where they're building. It's it it's, a, it's a dis- it. okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a display of you know being on a cruise ship and Kim Cattrall's like uh, sure could use some suntan lotion if somebody rub it on. And of course he's oh I mean, it's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. And they start rolling around, and that's when Felix is standing there over him, and he says, "What kind of sick man are you rolling says- around with a mannequin?" He says, you are sick puppy. Sick puppy. <laughs> and he is, because, you know, if you walked into a guy rolling around covered in suntan lotion with a dummy, you think, <laughs> okay, yeah. uh, you're pretty lonely guy. <laughs> <laughs> and while he's confronting him about this, off in the distance, you've got Amon and, and Roxy, who just came up a flight of steps, maybe an escalator. I think that's what it was, but he's got a camera, and he's taking shots of Jonathan yeah. laying on the floor with the mannequin on top of him, and he's got, like, his hand on her butt. and uh, It's really bad. She says, In yeah. fact, Roxy says to him, maybe we shouldn't take pictures because this could literally ruin someone's life. Yeah. You know, maybe she's, she still has feelings for him. Sure. But also, let, let's not forget that, like, moments before this, Armand said to her, Hmm, the smell of fresh leather. I've always, I've always wanted to do it in a, in a shoe, shoe owl. <laughs> and she sort of hits him, and he's like, "Maybe I can offer you something in your, in your size. size." And she slaps him, and he's like, "It's a joke. Come on." He's just a terrible pervert, isn't he? He's a terrible oh, pervert. Fantastic, but uh, in such a weird setup right here because. Felix tells Jonathan to get up to fight him. Oh, I know, I know. He says, he, he says, I've been told to, to look after you, but I think I'm going to deal with you in my own way. Yeah. And he says, get up. So he gets up and he sort of punches Jonathan, and they have a bit of a backwards and forwards. Yeah. And it's some a lot of this is actually them doing their own stunts, especially with Andrew McCarthy. They kind of throw themselves in, yeah. and again, it's that kind of like you're in a department store, what would you want to do? I'd want to smash that display up and smash that display up. So they get to do all that kind of stuff. Yep. And then, of course, Kim Cattrall, as, we, as we've as realised, can only really be seen when no one's looking other than Jonathan. Right. But because WD, uh, GW Bailey doesn't see her, she sneaks up behind him and she gives him a kick, knocks his baton out of his hand, means that Andrew McCarthy can bow! Yeah. Knock him out. Boom. Yeah, this one's for my mother. <laughs> Oh, this one's for Rambo. <laughs> this one's for my mama. <laughs> this one's for Rambo. I love that Rambo comes into this. I know that um, you talked about this in um, You Know What's Awesome, but uh, Rambo does come up a lot in a lot yeah. of 80s movies. Yeah, it was everywhere. Yeah, I mean, it, it's Rambo. such, such an, just, just an 80s icon. But this does break into um, where we have the hang gliding in the store. Here we go. Where they're, She's they're, flying. They're they're cruising around on these bicycles. The, this, this scene, man, last night I was watching it with my wife, and I literally just yelled out, stupid. Hey, it's, this is stupid. Because <laughs> she's riding on her bike, <laughs> and Hollywood hears a noise, and he looks out in the hallway, and he doesn't see anything, and he turns his back, and then Andrew McCarthy comes by on a BMX bike. But when he goes by in the scene, obviously it's not him, and it's he's doing some sort of trick where he's on the opposite it's like side. A fourteen-year-old boy, <laughs> all of a sudden, without his hands on the handlebars, and he's doing this incredible wheelie. It's like, Woo! and Hollywood just goes and then takes his sunglasses off, puts on a different pair Put of sunglasses, and he's like, "That's better." <laughs> It's very subtle but very funny. That, oh, that moment. Man. I think this. I think the Hollywood guy. Um, what was his? What's his real name actually? Uh, Miss Ash Taylor. I mean, yeah. I, I honestly, I've never seen him in anything else. I think he's hilarious in this. Yeah, I've never seen him in anything else. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. But uh, this gets to where Jonathan is making such an impact that they <laughs> Claire makes him the vice president of the company. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Okay, this is this is. I'm going to draw the line here. A ridiculous line. 
and they and Estelle Getty steps over that line slightly at this point and says, "We're going to make you vice president, Jonathan." No, never mind hang gliding mannequins in your store. Never, never mind having you know intercourse with mannequins. Any of that stuff. And, and, and also, there's clearly, as we find out, there's clearly CCTV cameras throughout this. Store. Yeah. Never mind any of that. You're now VP. Congratulations. <laughs> Who cares if you slipped in all the fur coats with a mannequin the night before? Yeah, doesn't matter. You're the VP. Congrats. I, I love that she fires Felix because he's passed out. You know where where the hang glider hit him, and he's passed out. And now the 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 you know shop people are coming in. You know customers are coming in, and they see him laying there, and it's a disgrace. But the next day, when Jonathan's laying in the fur coats by himself, passed out in the middle of the store, naked, naked, you, you, you're you're vice president. I mean, <laughs> yeah. naked. Yeah. All, all G W Bailey had to do was be naked, be naked, and he could have been much better within his career. <laughs> but no. But no, you got it wrong. Yeah, yeah. it's just it's such a <laughs> yeah, fine. And the, word, and the best thing, Rick, as well, is that not only does he get promoted, but before that, they all give him a massive round of applause. Yeah, <laughs> everybody. Is he wakes up? Imagine the uh, the jarring moment in your life when you wake up naked in a department store, covered in fur coats, to people that you've never met clapping at you, <laughs> only to then be promoted to the second highest level in your yeah. organization. Absolutely, I'd have to pinch myself. <laughs> that's hot that's hot oh man <laughs> anyways after the reason he's by himself is because Kim Cattrall says you know what I gotta go get in the window display for in the morning cause people are gonna start coming in she goes back to to be, get in the display he's knocked out because you know they just did the deed so you know how guys are <laughs> so um <laughs> And at this point, this is where uh, Felix and Richards are hired by BJ to break into the store and steal the mannequin. And even ask Philip, uh, Philip, Felix, can you recognize the mannequin? Oh, yeah. I never forget a face or a name. (laughs) What does he he call him? him in the office like, Jesus. He says, I never forget a face or a name. And he calls him like Raymond or something completely random. He totally misses his name. Oh. He's got that stupid hat on as well. Yeah, and we, you know, and we're kind of skipping apart here, but there's a big car chase scene or a motorcycle slash car chase where That's right. Andrew or Jonathan decides to take Emmy out on the town one night. I mean, just load up the mannequin on the back of the bike, dressed up in your best attire. Let's go yeah, out and have well, a night not, on the town. Well, it's not skipping that. I mean, that that happens ex- Exactly after them, exactly after he comes in to the, you know, he gets hired to identify the mannequin. We then see yep. J- Jonathan decide to take Emmy out, <clears throat> and they go out. You know, she says, "But what if people see me? I won't look real to them." And he's like, "It doesn't matter to me. You right. know, he's totally in love with her." And it right. is, it kind of appeals to that. It's that kind of Beauty and the Beast, almost a Disney element to this film. If we're going to get mushy, there is a Disney vibe to this sure. film where it, it doesn't matter what people think of the person you're with, because if you can see the beauty in them. If you can see it, then that's all that matters. And that's kind of where, that's the romantic in me, Rick, as you know, I'm a bit of a romantic at heart. And that's kind of where this, yeah. this film is. Really. So yeah, he takes her out on his, on his motorcycle, but um, they get spotted. I mean, Roxy spots him initially, doesn't she? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's where she decides to go back to Mon's place. And uh, that's where that's he's right. in the bed and he's like, this never happens to me. <laughs> he can't, he can't perform. He he's can't got his tiger. It. He's got his tiger rug, his tiger um, picture it's, on the wall behind him. It's a him. black velvet painting of a tiger with, <laughs> with led or, or fluorescent lights behind it. <laughs> This Shining is on one the of wall. the most 80s yuppies <laughs> I've ever seen. It's ridiculous. It's, it's painful. It's like Harold Wall with never his room. Um, <laughs> maybe I can get myself a dummy. Can I get a mannequin? I want to get a mannequin. Where can I find a mannequin? <laughs> He's like, it must be you. I love the way he blames it. He's like, well, it must be you because you are so cold. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not me. It's you. Of but course. You, you got a great chase scene here that happens. With uh, yeah, yeah. Richards um, and, and and Felix driving that car, and if you noticed, every car that is in the scene 
are old clunkers because they know they're going to ram them and hit them. And I really looked at that and I was like, I told my wife, I was like, what an odd selection of vehicles here. And then I got to noticing all the ones that were just background in the scene were up to date cars, but every car that got hit or damaged or pushed were all like, 60s and 70s cars. They all look like they belong to Sam Raimi at some point. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> I mean, that instantly puts an image in your head, right? You're dead <laughs> on with that. Uh, uh, and, and I love the bit where um, they, they lose the, the bike for a moment and then they pull around the corner and the bike stopped at the lights and the mannequin's yeah. just <laughs> shooting the bird. bird. <laughs> She's like, and he sees it and he sort of bends the arm back down. <laughs> and WD, DW Bailey's like, uh, do you want to put on any camo? And he's like, I'm not going to put boot polish on my face. <laughs> That's it. I'm not taking that from any person or a mannequin. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> but they chase him down an alley, and I love the the car jumps to, oh. to go through the alley, and it gets stuck in between two buildings, and they're just suspended in the air. I mean, it's it's so ridiculous, <laughs> but I love it. I love it. Yeah, it really reminds me, and I know we we've talked off air. It reminds me of um like a police academy movie, just oh, yeah. something like that happening. Yeah. It's just so cool. I yeah, this is that fine line of doing the 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 rom com and taking elements of eighties schlock movies, you know, Police Academy, and just ramming those together. And and again, there was a ton that were coming out that were this kind of film. Outrageous Fortune again, kind of rings the same bell, right? Because it's about chasing down a guy that they both had been with, and you know, these movies are just running rampant. But this one's just got a different kind of sparkle to it. And uh, there was anyways. different levels and different um, different tiers of movie yeah. in the eighties. You had like your rom coms, your comedies. You had like, and like you can almost see this was on the same ladder going up to something like Beverly Hills Cop because right. it had all the car crashes and car chases in it. But it was slightly lower down the ladder, not in terms of quality, just in terms of family friendly. Right. It was a little bit more, but also it was a little, a little bit sweeter. Had a little bit of a a good heart to it, you know. I feel like, although, like, and I would even say that Beverly Hills Cop does have a good heart, but it's a little bit more sinister in, at times. Oh, yeah, this absolutely. Is, yeah. But this is, you know. Pure fun. Yeah. 87, what have you got? Car chases, crashes, you know, hang gliding in a shopping center. Right. You've got it all. It's just ridiculous. And, and, and your, your bad guys are laughable. I mean, you're, you're not so despicable you know they're not so despicable that you just absolutely hate the people you still kind of like richards because he's just the slime ball that he is a, a good example you could take this movie and adventures in baby setting and probably watch them in the oh same setting yeah. and be yeah, like yeah yeah and and, and, there, and that's a really good one actually you just expanded i was going to say my trilogy of for this kind of type of movie is big yeah weird science and mannequin oh, for the, yeah. those three for yep. me are like the ultimate fantasy, 80s, silly. But yeah, I guess Adventures and Babysitting as well. There's a couple of... Yep. You could really expand on it. Weird but Science is... is we, this is, is Weird Science. Like the building, you know, of, yep. of a woman. When he says, to, you know, you're my creator. When you said to me earlier, he says, you're my creation. I always think of my creation. My creation, yeah. Is it real? <laughs> boingo, boingo, um, man. <laughs> Ingo Boingo, baby. Oh, God, don't, don't even get me started. But yeah, like Big, Mannequin. Uh, uh, yes, all of these movies. Uh, it's just fantasy, isn't it? It's fantasy. Yeah. So, Abs- absolute fun. Later on that night, we kind of get back to the movie, I guess. We I'm sorry. It yet. Yes, we need to. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this is where Richards and, and Felix break into the store to steal the mannequin. And being that they can't recognize the mannequin, they just steal all the mannequins. He says, <laughs> Felix says, well, I've never noticed how much they all look alike, oh, actually. Man. <laughs> he's like, well, just, just take them all. Get the dummy. Get them all. And they just take every <laughs> single dummy in the store. Oh, man. And, meanwhile. Uh, yep. That's, that's when uh, Jonathan wakes up the next morning. Yeah. And Hollywood's like, hey, uh, you missed all the excitement. All the mannequins are gone. So, Only the female mannequins. Right. Including your your special girl. And he's yeah. like, what? What? And he runs. <laughs> Hand me my like, clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Hollywood. And, and 
Go the ahead. Hollywood reveal. Yo, man. Yeah. Now, if I was going to say to somebody, what kind of car would Hollywood have? They'd say probably a pink Cadillac. And I'd say, you're absolutely <laughs> correct. Yep. And I'd say, what would the license plate say? And they'd probably say, bad girl. Bad girl. And I'd say, absolutely <laughs> correct. And then I'd say, you know that scene in Batman where Michael Keaton says shields? And the car gets covered in a shield plating. Yeah. If Hollywood was going to do that, what would they do? They'd say, I'd probably say he'd put a polka dot <laughs> rain cover over his pink Cadillac. Exactly right again. Yeah. Correct. With the, with the, with his name on the side, Hollywood. <laughs> name. <laughs> and he does a little click again. Yeah. Because <laughs> it looks great. It looks great. I mean, while Jonathan is running into this store, trying to find the people that took his mannequins, Hollywood's outside <laughs> protecting his car, because that's more important. <laughs> it rains. Rick, it rains in Philadelphia sometimes. I guess you know it I mean? does. Yep. Come on. <laughs> but Jonathan runs in there, and this is where, all right, what did you do with her? Oh, we're glad you're here. We thought it would be cool to have the old team back together. So they're still trying to hire mm. him, blackmail him, because now they've got these pictures. Jonathan's like, I don't care. I've come to get my mannequin. Where is she? And that's where uh, Roxy gets upset and takes off. So even though, let's face it, Roxy is jealous (laughs) of a mannequin. She is? Yeah. Even though she doesn't understand that there's this other part of the relationship, just the fact that he is more enticed by a mannequin than her. Yeah. Yeah. That's a threat. Yeah, and she, she heads down to the uh, the basement where they happen to have a special mannequin shredding <laughs> machine. Luckily. It's like staring out of Chance Play 2. And, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> and she heads down there, and she just starts throwing all the mannequins yeah. onto this, this conveyor belt. You got a conveyor belt going up, and it drops them down into this, basically, a grinder. And yeah, it's like you know when you see well those movies on YouTube where people throw like bowling balls, yeah, and melons into that whole like big giant shredding. It's like yeah. that. Yeah, These exactly. Mannequins are, so she's in the process of destroying all the mannequins, and then we get the big cop chase scene throughout the mall where they're all chasing this Jonathan. Is, uh, this is like police story with Jackie Chan though, because yep. for the next five minutes you've got Switcher just fighting his way through. Every security guard, he pulls hats over them, handcuffs yep. one of their legs to there. He literally might as well turn into Jackie Chan for yep. five minutes. It's yep. pretty amazing, actually. But then these are the worst security guards <laughs> I've ever seen. Because later on, as we'll bring up, Hollywood defeats them all with only a hose pipe. <laughs> well, it is a fire hose, which has extreme high pressure. <laughs> I can but, imagine it being painful, actually. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And... Uh, and the, the, he does the whole bowling pin thing, too, right? There's like 10 cops, and he just <laughs> slides on the ground. Maybe that's why those bowling shoes came in handy. Hey, who knows? Hey, maybe that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> if he only had that jacket that Amon had on earlier, and he could have puffed it up into a big ball <laughs> and just ran into him like that, and they could have made a, a pin sound from a bowling alley, it would been perfect, I right? I imagine if they'd have put that sound over... That sound effect, because I love it when they throw that sound effect into films. You know, when, when they do that 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 strike sound effect. Right. I love it. <laughs> but needless to say, he he gets away from the cops, and because I mean they're all kind of beating him up. They caught him in this little alleyway out back. Well, it's not an alleyway; it's just the back part of the of the store that leads to where the grinder is. And there's like 20 cops piled up on top of him, and somehow he sneaks out of the bottom of the pile. Oh, it, it's like the Tasmanian Devil whirlwind, where yeah. two, three people are fighting in a big whirlwind, and then one person will crawl out and leave the other two <laughs> fighting. And that that's what he's done there. Yeah. He's seen Warner Brothers cartoons. He knows. Yeah. <laughs> and while the cops realize he's not in there, they start coming after him. That's when Hollywood hits him with the hose. He says, and- this is what it's like to be a man, honey. <laughs> And he's snapping Man's the whole time. Than yours, sweetheart. <laughs> he starts spray them down. Oh man! And of course they're you know falling down and oh oh you know because the the water pressure is so strong. And um, they're like, but this must have been a fun scene because they're like the actors are literally slipping over oh, yeah. and falling over and you know it is yeah. genuinely they're just literally getting knocked off their feet by the sure. water. It's hilarious. Yeah, and this is this is an old time gag, right? I mean, this is this goes all the way back to your Keystone Cop stuff. I mean. It, oh, the only thing they could have done better Keystone. is they could have just start throwing pies. You know, would be the next thing. So, but 
But he makes it into the into the grinding room, and uh, the guy that's running that room just comes out with his pants down, and he's pulling him back. And, hey, you can't be in uh, here, Ricky. There's only two things he was doing. <laughs> right. One of those was taking a dump. Right. The other one was not taking a dump. Right. <laughs> that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> Yeah. The guy works with a room full of naked mannequins. You pick. <laughs> oh, but uh, Jonathan runs up the grinder and grabs Emmy right before she's going off the edge. She does go off the edge, and he grabs her by the arm. Mm-hmm. And this is something my wife said too. He's he's struggling pulling her up. I don't know if it's because he's on the conveyor belt and it's still turning, and he can't get his footing. But then all of a sudden, she turns real and grabs onto him. And my wife's like, Jonathan's probably going, you weighed a whole lot less when you were just a mannequin. <laughs> when you were hollow and you weighed a few pounds. Now Can you you're change Kim back Cattrall. real quick? Because this isn't helping. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Kim Cattrall's not a big girl, but she still weighs a lot more than a hollow mannequin. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Quickly, change back. I'll get you up the conveyor belt. Then you can change back to real. That's fine. Right. That's all I need. <laughs> and, and lo and behold, by the time he finally pulls her up, then the guy that's managing the building back there turns the machine off. I'm like, well, why didn't we think of that first? Yeah, because the whole time he's like, you should be up there. Hello. <laughs> it's dangerous up there. And like he lets him like struggle for ages and ages. It finally pulls the girl out. And then he's like, right. turned off. And in pure <laughs> 80s form, because he, he knows that she was a mannequin when she went in. I'm talking about the guy that worked back there. Sees him pull out a real girl. Well, What does he want? Yeah. He starts digging for mannequins, right? And starts like, trying to kiss Here's him. a leg. Here's an arm. <laughs> Oh, hang on. Here's, I'll get a kiss. This oh, it's nothing. It's not going to work. And what does he find now, Rick? What does he find? He finds Roxy because she's she got a big pile of garbage dumped on her while she's standing there watching the conveyor run. He finds her, thinks she's a mannequin. He goes to kiss her, and she's like, nah! he says, he says, yes, thank God. <laughs> and he, so he starts kissing her, and she's like, she wakes up to this like dweeb with a runny nose kissing her, like, <laughs> get off me. And he's like, oh, no. And he carries on kissing her for ages. Right. <laughs> this <is a> disgusting <laughs> guy. And this is the most 80s ending you can have, man. Oh, I mean, yeah. so cool. now all the cops show up. You got the owner of Illustra showing up. You get Claire showing up. You get Hollywood showing up. Mm. Mama put the coins in my eyes because I sure don't believe what I am seeing. <laughs> She's the dummy. She's the dummy. <laughs> he says that about five times. She's the dummy. And it, it's it's the quick wrap up, right? Because you know they're going. Okay, we've already hit our hour and forty minutes, so we need a quick wrap up here. Come on, uh, guys. I want these guys arrested for. You know, stealing the mannequins, and and you're going to jail for trying to ruin my business. And I've got everything on videotape because when I fired these guys, I didn't have security, so I put in security cameras, and they caught everything. They caught them sneaking back into my store, breaking and entering. You know, you're wrapping it all up right here in this. Bowl. Andrew McCarthy's like, whoa, you've got you got video cameras? footage. <laughs> She's like, don't worry, I only watched what I needed to watch. Well, I don't know what Estelle Getty <laughs> needed to watch, Ricky. <laughs> Oh, I mean, I'm hoping it was wholesome, but well, it, you know, it, it could. Uh, <laughs> again, it's it's that story of I've made this guy vice president, but he's, you know, he's having his way with mannequins on my fur coats in the middle of my store. <laughs> the guy's good at his job. Let him have his vice. He does. He does what he does. Well, she even says that at one point, right? I don't care if he puts a rubber glove on his head, and runs around naked, saying he is the. He does say that. Did what does he say? She says something to some crazy extent of. Oh, well, okay, the guys like, are probably wearing lace underwear right now, and her mom sort of turns his head like. <laughs> Not, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's it, man. That that is mannequin. Well, yeah, yeah, because they all get arrested and get their comeuppance. Hollywood does a massive finger snap in their faces. Oh yeah, obviously, of course he does. And we then cut to the marriage. They get married. Yeah, yeah in a window store. And yeah. it looks like they're dummies. It's very good, actually. It looks like they're dummies. And it's very sweet and 
overly sweet but lovely and i love that and then, it, and then it cuts into starship starship playing, singing yep and then we get a freeze frame and and, and 80s movies that end in freeze frame yeah are always going to be a winner in my heart absolutely absolutely yeah, yeah. The, and, and and you know again this the the fast paced everything wraps up within a minute right yeah people get arrested are... people find out that she's real she's now real to everybody so everybody can nobody see her cares. now nobody cares about that and you get married and you have a song and you freeze frame all within nobody, a minute somebody says in fact they question it twice because somebody says she says um oh i don't forget kidnapping and somebody says kidnapping who she says me she's yeah. the dummy <laughs> she's the dummy <laughs> And then, and then um, Roxy even says to her, where, did you, where the hell did you come from? <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm a dummy that's come to life. Don't worry about it. It's the end of the movie now. Don't worry we, about we got time. You People. wouldn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> What's yeah. going on with Starship as well? Because um, then I get confused from the name of that band. Well, it, it's... Uh... <laughs> it has to I do need, with... I need to be the guy to ask this as yeah. well. Yeah. Well, you, you've got... Owners of the name, for one thing. So it's always that band member thing, right? So um, you got Jefferson Airplane, which was their 60s psychedelic. That's that's what that's they right. started with. Like that. So that's where White Rabbit came from, somebody to love, you know. Don't you want somebody to love? Mm. And all that stuff. Cable guy, I've seen that. <laughs> yep. And, I mean, super psychedelic. They were as psychedelic as you can get. Uh, then the band kind of split. And you had some different rocker guys get into the scene in the 70s, and they changed it to Jefferson Starship because, hey, we're like, you know, you've got some semblance of the old band in here, but we are a different machine, and we're taking it to another level, right? Jefferson Starship. Um, Then, they were Jefferson Starship for a long time, probably longer than any other name. And... um, I really don't know the explanation of why they just went to Starship because they just became more poppy. Um, yeah, they did. They became really eighty synthy poppy, like rock pop. Yeah. And all of a sudden, because I I don't remember. I, I'm I'm a bit younger than you, but I don't remember Jefferson Airplane. But I certainly remember Jefferson yep. Starship. And then sure. I, I remember Starship. And I remember conversations in the playground where people would say they're the same band and i'd say yeah. well no they've got different names right. one of the words is the same but uh, as i'm older obviously, it, with it Google, is all, I realize, it's all personnel changes right so mm-hmm. so think about this the, the star wars holiday special right <laughs> that's jefferson starship on there that's playing the song it really is yeah <laughs> that's not the same band that's this you know, version that Starship. There's different people. In it. It, it, I think it all came down to Grace. Grace Slick was the embodiment of Jefferson Airplane. She's the female okay. singer that was, you know, and she left in the '70s for a while, which it became Jefferson Starship, and it became a dude band, right? Mm-hmm. Somehow Grace Slick came back to the band, but they already had this guy named Mickey Thomas in the band. Mickey Thomas is a great singer. He's the the male voice you hear all the time. Yeah. He uh he was in uh uh Narvel Phelps band. So you know the song I fooled around and fell in love. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. That's Mickey Thomas singing that when he was really young. Wow. And he became the singer in Jefferson Starship. Then they brought Gray Slick back into the band. So now they're a duo singing pair, right? And I think that's where it became the whole Starship thing. Now, I'm I'm paraphrasing a lot of this. I'm sure there's more meat and potatoes to it. But they are really separate bands. Jefferson Starship was more of a rock Well, it's three band. separate bands, isn't it, yeah. in total? Yeah. yeah. And Starship is more of your poppy 80s band, yep. And this song, and the reason bringing it back to this this song, this film, this song was a phenomenal hit for them, really. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, huge. Uh, as was um, we built this city. I mean, that's that. And I actually realised I made a mistake. We were talking a few days ago, and I said to you when I was a kid, I sang a song to my class. It was actually <laughs> we built this city on rock and roll. That was a song I sang. Uh-huh. When I was about 10 years old, nine years old, yeah. for some reason, I decided to stand up in front of my class and sing that because I, I don't know the words anymore, but I certainly knew the words back then for some reason. <laughs> my teacher was like, what are you singing? And I said, I'm singing this. She said, do you want to sing it in front of the class? And I said, well, actually, yes, I do. <laughs> and I did. And my class was like, yay. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. 
I don't know what I was singing. Why? I probably didn't know all the words. I was a child. But yeah, this band, this end credits, this whole film. Yeah. So Great I, I got to tell you, I, I got to tell feel. you my built the city story as well because uh, my, my daughter, of course, she can't help it. She grew up under my influence, so she likes everything God, I like. God love her. <laughs> School bus picks her up out here. This is you know many years ago now, but the bus driver was an old burnout guy, right? So this is this is during the the two thousands, right? And she said every morning. She'd get on the bus, and he he had built he had put his own speaker system in the bus, <laughs> and he had a cassette that he played over and over. And she said the first thing you'd hear when you get on the bus was "We built this city." She's like every day you were going to hear that song at least three times. <laughs> I mean, but it's just amazing. I bet that you know now she probably absolutely hates that song. She said that every time she'd be on the bus trying to go back to sleep, I said she. We built this city. Like, oh no! <laughs> Listen to the radio. Don't you remember? No. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I, I just, I'm telling you. After rewatching this, I, this could be the definitive '80s movie. It it checks all the boxes yeah. of what an '80s movie should be. Soundtrack, animated credits, goofy storyline. You know the the, the and, uh, and usually there's a, a supernatural element which people don't which people yeah. seem to ignore. You're right. Um, whether that's this or House or Teen Wolf, um, weird science, just Teen Wolf. Yeah, there's a supernatural element which people just seem to ignore and just carry on with their every day. Yeah. It's like, dude, this guy's playing basketball and he's a werewolf. <laughs> Look at him, please. This guy just turned into a man. It's Tom Hanks. He was a child the other day. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we'd make it totally acceptable. You're like, yeah, it's Doesn't just matter. Kind of, it's the norm. You Bigfoot know? and Hendersons. That's another one for me. <laughs> oh. Another one. Harry, yeah, Harry and the Hendersons, yeah. Or Harry and the Hendersons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, uh, we've got a new pet. It's a fucking Bigfoot. Brilliant. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> Yeah, his name's Harry. He lives in a basement. Good right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that's what made it so fun, man. And and real fun. I don't know real. what happened. It just seems like we we end up taking everything so serious, and we have to have explanation. Um, Backstory, man. Oh, wait, no. It's what kills me about the Star Wars stuff, man. When when Lucas felt it was important to go back and give us the backstory, oh, and, I don't care about any of that. No. Don't me. I don't need an explanation of the Force. It is what it is. That's why I loved about, um, and I recently reviewed Batman, the 1989 Batman with RJ on his show, because yeah, you, did. you give a little, there's a little snippet of the backstory, but we all know what happened with Bruce Wayne. You know, yeah. we only need to see a two second clip of what happened. We just want to see Batman kicking some butt. Right. That's all we want to do. That's right. all we want to see. Yeah. We don't need a Michael Myers backstory, right? Oh, I mean don't. Rob Zombie, what were you thinking? Yeah, I mean so I uh, just I hate when we feel like we have to have an explanation because it kills the magic of what makes these characters what they are. Oh, by the way, I did send RJ a message saying, Hey guys or hey man, um a two and two hour and sixteen minute episode about Batman is not bite size. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sometimes when I appear on his show as a guest, it becomes more of a lunchtime size. <laughs> I'm Man, a talker. This has been an absolute blast. I'm glad we finally got to do this. This is fun. Me too, dude. I've Man. had an absolute blast. Thank you. So, listen, thank you so so much for having me on. Um, I was glad I was glad to get to meet the guys briefly. Yeah, um, yeah. We had to shut them out, man. It got too crazy. I, I understand why you do that with guests. I do. <laughs> but um, no, listen, um, I hope I can come back at some point to talk about something else crazy because this was so much fun and I had a, yeah. lot, a lot of fun talking to you about this. And I'm going to just think of Hollywood now. Whenever I think of you, I'm going to think of finger clicks. <laughs> mm-hmm. there's, that bit, there's that one that he does. He just goes, Mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. good. So good. it's great man hey take take the second right here i mean because I've, I've got a lot of people that would want to know where else you're you're jamming at so go ahead and give us the spiel on podcast on haunted hill and what you got going on oh thank you yes so the podcast on haunted hill i do that with gav um gav chucky Steele. we've been going for about seven years yeah. and we've got we're on 100 episode 102 is coming out 
probably within the next week, that's going to be our Child's Play episode, looking at Child's Play 1 and 2, because yeah. that's a franchise I don't want to just smash through within one episode. I want to come back and do a few <laughs> on that one, because I think that's a good, fun episode, a uh, good, fun franchise to do. So, yeah, that's what we've got coming up. Um, and I also appear quite regularly on the Bite Size Cinema podcast with R. Jamie Creedy, as we just talked about. Yeah. I've got a few shows lined up with that guy. I'm going to be doing planes, trains, automobiles, and also, uh, as we get towards christmas i'll be doing a little bit of home alone action as well so i've got a few shows coming up oh. and i'm hoping if uh, ricky will have me to come back on here at some point to talk more absolute 80s nonsense oh yeah it's a done deal there's there's no question about that the handshake but... it's a golden handshake <laughs> Yeah, hey, and I have to say, too, I was telling my wife earlier, because you helped me out on my crazy idea for one of the, or a couple of the House of Wax episodes. That's right, man. I did some voice recordings, didn't I? And I I wanted to say, you know what? You may have tapped into a little bit of your own Hollywood when you were creating that character. (laughs) I mean, put the coins on my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think about some of the lines and stuff that that I that I gave you to do, and you kind of turned it into a. Oh, we'll just put some tissue on there. <laughs> I did, didn't I? I did do that. <laughs> so, you know, again, uh, no, I'll take that. That is a huge compliment. Thank you. Hollywood is one of those iconic characters that when you when you grew up with them. It, it it never gets old, right? And that's what makes these movies stick around. I mean, Kim Cattrall, yeah, she is Kim Cattrall. Andrew McCarthy is, like you said, almost kind of switchable. You can almost trade out a couple of other characters, but yeah. Yeah. you can't do that with Hollywood. Absolutely not. And it's strange that he didn't go on to do much else, really. But yeah. it's definitely a character that um, is memorable. And if you know your, your 80s movies or, you know, the old 80s movie, you this guy is going to stick out for you. You know, he's incredible. He's brilliant and right. way ahead of his time, man. Compared, you know, compared to as we talked about earlier on, you know, with the whole talk around politics, etc., these days and representation. This guy, you know, we got a yep. black gay character just coming out, and there's not not even an eyelid has been batted. This right. guy's just a main character in this crazy journey of a film, and I love that about this film. Adds a whole extra element to this film for me. Sure, love it. Yep. Man, this has been a blast. You know it. It's been hot. It's been, <laughs> it's been hot. hot. All right, folks. Hey, I can't say it enough. If you love your mo- movies, extra 80s with extra 80s cheese on top, this is your select pick, man. You got to check this one out. No doubt about it. Uh, Dad, we're going to cut out, man. All right, dude. Thank you so much. We will see y'all later. Adios. Adios.